Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the January 16th, 2018 meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority and Happy New Year to everybody out there. Roll call, please. Authority Member Ogajanian. Garbetian. Here. Najarian. Here. Parazian. Here. Sinanian. Here. Chair Devine. Here. Next item, please. The agenda for the January 16, 2018 regular meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority was posted on Friday, January the 12th, 2018 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you, and next. Four will be approval of minutes. A, minutes of regular Housing Authority meeting of December 12th, 2017 and December 19th, 2017. I'll move for A. Uh, second. Second. Okay, hearing no objections, the minutes stand approved as submitted. What's next, please? <clears throat> next would be oral communications. There are no cards submitted at this time. Okay, and next? Next would be uh, authority members and staff comments. Okay, are there any comments? Ms. Frazier. I have a comment. So I want to touch an issue about the Section 8. Myself, I'm getting Section 8, and I wanted to move one-bedroom apartments since my son got married and we don't need any more. So, and there is no possibility to find any Section 8. Uh, usually I'm applying online, but whenever you go, it says no Section 8, no dogs. No Section 8, no, no dogs. And sometimes when I'm, uh, I have a chance to talk to them, and I'm asking why is, why the, is the reason do not give their people with Section 8? They say because your Minimum, uh, maximum is low, but we can't go that low. So because their uh, one bedroom units usually start from 1500. So there is no possibility. I wanna just let everybody know. Okay. Well, that's that clearly a, a trend uh, because we hear about it, or I hear about it increasingly. And I understand that it's probably a reflection of the current economic realities and uh, the rent situation in the city of Glendale particularly. But this is a problem. If folks have uh, Section 8 vouchers and they can't get housing, it sort of obviates the whole program. So I'd like uh, some kind of a report, status report from on this issue. Someone, anyone? Right. Mr. Zoback, are you here? Very <clears throat> brief response, Mr. Zoback. Yeah. Otherwise, we can always bring something back. Okay. But yeah, we'll have Mr. sure. Let's let's agree. do that as well. But sure. Sure. but Absolutely. right for now. Well, I, there's not much to to put into a written report, so I think a verbal hopefully okay. would suffice. But um, we are held by uh, standards and funding by HUD as to how much we can set our limits for our various bedroom counts. Uh, last year, we increased the um, per unit uh, cost for one bedrooms. And we are recommending again to HUD to increase that again to a higher level. And so we're hoping that would provide relief to participants like Ms. Parazian who are in the process of moving from one unit to another. But we do have limits as to what we can and uh, sure. increase them to. We could uh, take them to some level that is, we consider to be equitable <coughs> and, and consistent with what's out there, but it would inflate our budget to uh, numbers that HUD may not be able to uh, cover us in the end. So we, you know, it's a balancing act. Uh, but we are recommending approval of uh, increasing our subsidies for one bedroom payment standards. And that'll be processed hopefully within the next one to two months uh, and then submitted to HUD for approval. And what will that uh, uptake be? I don't have the immediate number in my head right now, but I believe it's uh, up to an, maybe possibly an $80 increase uh, in our one bedroom payment standard, so we hope that will provide some relief. Which is currently what? Sorry, uh, what's the? I can't, I can't quote for you exactly what the number is. It, the numbers escape me, but uh, it is something we're working on. But at the same time, we've estimated between the changes between those one bedroom increases and some of the two bedrooms, and uh, in the studios and the threes, uh, it could possibly increase our budget to over a million dollars. Sure. That at the end may or may not be covered by HUD. Sure. Uh, so then, you know, you, there's a certain limit that uh, risk that we would want to take in increasing those standards. But we certainly understand the, um, the issues that participants are facing out there. I think the question was, if I may, my, my sure. <coughs> the question was, what is the, the limit for, 11, uh, for, for one bedroom 
right now? Is it is it one thousand? Is it eleven hundred dollars? No, it's over a thousand. I'd, I'd have to. Uh, okay. I don't want to quote right. a wrong number. So I can so I can follow it up with an email, with the, the current standards and what we propose moving them to. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Councilmember Najarian. Thank you. Um, if you can please get back to us with an analysis under the Fair Employment and Housing Act. I think <coughs> ab initio, if a discrimination against someone who has a Section 8 without going through the basic application and pricing discussion may, may be discriminatory. No, I, I, I was just reading in a, um, <coughs> a magazine where uh, a third of California renters are now one room renters, one room and a bath, and the um, landlords are charging $1,200 for one room and a bath. So um, there is a problem out there with, uh, with rents going up and up and, and what is available. So uh, we'll look forward to that report. Uh, from <coughs> Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, I, just, I just have a comment that uh, the mayor and I um, held the uh, interviews for uh, our vacant authority member, and um, <clears throat> we will be bringing back a recommendation to council um, in the near future. So we have accomplished, uh, we did accomplish that during the holidays. So with that, uh, next. I want to go on record and say, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, Divine made me work really hard to come back three times to have his interviews done. Thank yeah, you. I did. Was, I had to. It was good, good job. Good I had job. to dog after him, yeah. that's for sure. Okay. But we got it done. That's the important thing. Okay. Next item. Next would be adjournment. So moved. Second. We are adjourned at 316. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, coming this, this afternoon. Welcome to the January 16, 2018, joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and Glendale Successor Agency. May we have a roll call, please? Sure. Council members Agajanian? Devine? Here. Najarian? Here. Sinanian? Here. Mayor Garapetian? Here. Uh, may we have your report? What's, on the, what's next on the agenda? Uh, the uh, agenda for the January 16, 2008 <coughs> joint public meeting, uh, 2018 joint public meeting of the City Council and Successor Agency was posted on Friday, January 12, 2018 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. And what's next? One would be Director of Community Development regarding bond expenditure agreement between Glendale Successor Agency and City of Glendale, 1A, Successor Agency resolution approving a bond expenditure agreement for expenditures of, of excess 2000, uh, 2011 bond proceeds between Glendale Successor Agency and the City of Glendale. The 1B City Council resolution approving a bond expenditure agreement for expenditures of excess 2011 bond proceeds between Glendale Successor Agency and the City of Glendale. Thank you, Ms. Beard. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council and the Glendale Successor Agency members, we're going to go to Mr. Philip Lanza Fame, Director of Community Development. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the, of the uh, City Council and Chair of the Successor Agency, this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, an administrative instrument for us. Uh, what it will do is uh, provide some ease in the spender expenditure of bonds. Uh, rather than have the Successor Agency continue to put uh, allowed bond proceeds on a, in a recognized um, obligation payment schedule, uh, this allows us to transfer that responsibility to the city. The bond proceeds come to the city, and the city, by virtue of that agreement, agrees to uh, use them according to the indenture. Uh, again, this is something it's pretty common. Uh, the Department of Finance has been approving these. Uh, it makes it easier for them <coughs> as well to administer uh, these bond proceeds. So we are asking for your uh, approval as both the successor agency and the city council. Okay. Any questions? I'll move the item. I'll second. Roll call, please. Council Member Agajanian. Devine. Yes. Najarian. Yes. Sinanian. Yes. Mayor Garbetian. Yes. And what's next, please? Adjournment for both city council.